my fellow scientists. Welcome to another episode of Science is Everywhere, the home edition. My name is Marie Lanka, and I'm from the Children's Discovery Museum of San Jose, and I have brought you virtually to the museum today, and more specifically, to an area that's about to celebrate its one-year anniversary of being open. For those of you who've been to the museum before, can you take a look behind me and take a guess where I am? I'll give you a hint. It's upstairs. You got it. It's the Leroy Neiman Art Studio. Pretty cool, right? So since it's about to celebrate its one year anniversary, this week we're going to be doing all of our different activities going around this area and more specifically the artist, Leroy Neiman. So let's talk about him really quick. He was a painter who liked to show things in maybe a little different way than we're used to seeing them. So for example, here's a piece of his work. Take a look. And here's another one. And coming back into the room that I am virtually sitting in, <laughs> take a look, there's a rider right behind me. All of these pictures, did you notice something? They were all done with maybe some colors that you're not used to seeing on these objects. So for example, for the rhino behind me, you probably haven't seen one that's bright yellow <laughs> with red to highlight. So this is something that he liked to do to kind of make it a little bit more striking, a little bit more interesting. So that's all well and good, that's art. But how are we gonna bring that into science? Well, he was a painter, so I thought this would be a great time for us to talk about how paint is made and make our own paint. What, how is paint made? You usually get in a can and it's done, right? Well, there are some different parts of it. So we're going to do a very basic paint today and break it down into its very simple parts. So it's three parts and let's go ahead and let's say, let's put it on that side because the rhino's on the other side. <laughs> so here's our different parts. We have a pigment, a binder, and a solvent. Okay. So that's all well and great. Those are big words, but what do they mean? Well, the pigment is the color of the paint, where the paint gets its color from. Usually that's something that's ground up, that's dry, but you may get pigment from other places as well. Well, that's not all paint is made of. It's also got something called a binder. Well, a binder isn't like something you'd put paper in. <laughs> when we're talking about a binder in this case, it's something that binds or sticks everything together. So all the parts kind of hold on to them. And it also helps the paint stick to whatever we paint on. So whether that be paper or walls or whatever it ends up being, it helps bind or stick to that thing. Then you have a solvent. Well, if you just have a binder and you just have pigment, that's pretty thick. A solvent is going to make it a little bit thinner and easier to spread out. It's called viscosity, if you want to know that word. So a lot of different times they'll use water as a solvent. That's a very basic type of solvent. And you'll find that in your watercolors and some other paints as well. So, okay, so we know about all three of these parts. How are we going to make it? Well, we're going to use some things from your kitchen to be those three things. So this is what you're going to need for the experiment. You're going to need your pigment, and we're just going to use some food coloring. Okay, it can be any food coloring that you like. This is just my red. You're also going to be using something for a binder, and that is going to be just some basic flour, something that you cook with, okay? That's gonna help stick everything together. Well, that's gonna be pretty thick, right? So we're gonna need a solvent, something that makes it a little bit easier to paint with. I already named what that is. What do you think it's gonna be? It's gonna be water, okay? And that'll help even things out just a little bit so we can go ahead and paint with it. So those are the basic things that you're going to need for this experiment. Now we'll switch over and we'll show you some other things that you could be using with this experiment as well. And then once we put our paint together, we will go ahead and make some art. Science and art can't beat that combination. All right, so let's have some fun.
nice work, scientists. So you're scientists and artists today because you can be both. <laughs> Good work. So now that you went ahead and used your paints, let's review really fast. What are those three parts again? They were the and and also <laughs> put them all together. There you go. And you've got paint that you can use at home. All right, good work today, guys. So we're not just celebrating the one year anniversary of the studio, we're also celebrating the 30th anniversary of the museum. So like I said, lots of things to celebrate. So what we'd love to see from you are what your memories are from the museum, whether it be back when it opened to all the way up to the Virtual Purple Museum and the activities that we're doing now. We'd love to see your photos, your videos, or if you just want to write us and tell us maybe a memory that you've had, please show us what your memories are because we want to celebrate you as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and give you that hashtag in just a second, but I did want to say thank you for your time today, and we will see you at our next episode of Science is Everywhere. Tune in for that hashtag, and we'll see you later, guys. Thank you for watching our Virtual Purple Museums broadcast. If you're enjoying this content, please consider making a donation to support our efforts. Our summer broadcasts are every Wednesday and Friday on Facebook and YouTube. Stay in the loop by joining our email list. Visit www.cdm.org and sign up today.